What up everyone, it's Kirtan Singh and I am back again with a brand new video. So this is my Naruto, Naruto Shippuden review, my discussion, whatever you want to call it. And there is a lot to talk about because there are 500 episodes plus whatever I want to talk about from Naruto uh, I have to talk about within this short video. And as you can see, I have a huge smile on my face because this is something I really want to talk about. Um, I literally just finished watching Naruto Shippuden last night. Um, and then I watched one episode of Baruto just because I wanted to see um, if there was anything that would be clarified in Baruto just straight off the back or anything because the ending is something huge that I really want to talk about and uh, not in a good way. So obviously because there are so many things to actually talk about I'm going to miss a few things because there are so many episodes to cover and uh, I just have opinions on a lot of things and I didn't grow up watching this. I Obviously it wasn't on free to... Uh, CTV or whatever it is, then it was on Cartoon Network and all this kind of stuff. So I never saw it or anything, so I don't have that nostalgia growing up with it. Obviously I knew about it, I knew the Naruto run, I knew some of the characters, but I didn't really have any spoilers for the show itself. So that's why I'm actually recording it here today, because normally I record in the room next to my sister's room, but then uh, she doesn't want any spoilers for this. She is also having a uni presentation right now, so I can't go record there and even if I could, she would probably hear what I have to say. So I have to record it in here today. That's why we're in this different location. And probably by the time this video goes out, I'm it's actually like December or something. It's later in the year because I'm recording this September 2020. So I'm recording it straight after I finish watching Naruto, but then I'm going to go and upload it later because I already have other stuff I have to upload or plan to upload first. And the really cool thing is that almost a year ago on September 28th or something like that in 20. 19, I actually uploaded my video on uh, the Naruto episode 133, uh, Bleed or a Friend. So this is really cool. Almost a year later, I finished Naruto Shippuden and I'm uh, talking about it again. So straight off the bat, let's talk about the thing that really carries this show and that is the characters. The characters in Naruto are amazing. They're so great. They're the main thing that keeps you wanting to come back and watch the show over and over again. Because some of the writing, uh, as I'm gonna point out later, there's a lot of um, retcons and just like contradictory things which happen. The action is so many often just subpar, but then the characters, you love the characters, but sadly not all the characters. My favorite is still Rock Lee. I can't get over Rock Lee. He's just such an amazing, amazing. He's such an amazing guy. I just, so fun, so entertaining, so strong as well that he's not onto the OP side uh, like Sasuke is, but he's also not useless like Sakura is. But I'm gonna get into that. I always wondered why people thought, like, like I always heard Sakura was like a, a useless character and everything, always made fun of. She really is. The amount of times she says, I'm not gonna be dependent on anyone else again, I'm gonna do something on my own, and then she does one thing or maybe nothing at all, and then immediately goes back to being useless. It, it, it's so often that he's just like, why? And then Eno is just a basic copy of her, um, and then they're like the characters which are like, eh, but then there are so many good characters. When I say that characters will drive the show, nonetheless, even if there are bad characters or characters which aren't as great as the others, you still spend so much time with them that you just can't help but love them and care for them. And continuing with the characters, there are a couple things I want to quickly touch on. So Sasuke, you know, he's the uh, rival for Naruto and everything. I don't like his character. I think, you know, he's got no traits or anything really going for him. He's just powerful and he's just so easily gets more and more power. I know there's a time jump between Naruto and Shippuden. But still, even during Shippuden, he fights one person, he uses that lightning attack on Itachi. And then even when I was watching the Itachi fight, I was like, no way Sasuke is winning this easily. Like, even like, it turns out that Itachi, like the whole thing of Itachi happened. But um, Sasuke uses that lightning move, he gets the Susano or whatever it was. He uses uh, Amit, sorry, the Black Fire thing. Man, I can't remember all the names off the top of my head. But he uses that kind of stuff, he fights Danzo, and then... He just goes on from enemy to enemy, or a person to person, and he just gets stronger and stronger and he fights and fights him. And sure, he struggles in, in some of them, so he's not like a Gary Stu or anything, because we see some sort of development. I need to quickly say this, so Sasuke being a typical 2000s kid is so like, ugh, like girls love him, boys want to be him, and as much as I complain about him, He's smart and at times an entertaining character. His fights are almost always visually entertaining and raw. Once again, the final fight with Naruto was so great. I get that people can find Sasuke relatable, his loss and the way he acts out, but those uh, relatable moments, they're just... 
more often unlikable to me and I just I can't stand the character as much loneliness you know it's always hinted at but then revenge and power and all these other things which I just don't like are always at the forefront with this character and you know I'll quickly one final note is that the Sharon God just gets an upgrade after upgrade after upgrade and I can barely think of what it can't do by the end of the show so yeah and the Uchi Uchiha I care more about is Itachi and that's funny because I didn't like the Itachi twist and I still think it's poorly done because they tell they have the Itachi twist and it comes out of nowhere there's no setup or anything for it, it comes out of nowhere and then they tell us all these things try to justify it happening and then hundreds of episodes later or something like that long long time down the line they have episodes which show it and it's it's so pointless by then that you already tell me all this and I, I don't believe it because one it's Toby or Madara or whatever you want to call him he's the one who's telling um, Sasuke it Sasuke is just being an idiot and not really doing what Itachi would want it's poorly done but then by the end of it I'm fine with it but then I still don't like Sasuke because I think them trying to redeem him they have like that little arc towards the end uh, too little too late they would say even in the end of it he still doesn't even go back to the village which is funny um, but then before I get to the ending I'll just talk about one more character Kiba I think he is probably the most pointless character there is I don't know why he's there I always thought when I was watching Naruto that um, when they were going after the four sound uh, shinobi and everything I thought oh Choji's gonna die because he felt like the most, uh, the one that they could live without, I guess. And it could have a great effect on Shikamaru and everything. Uh, but then he was alive and they did the whole thing where it's like all of them are each going to die. But no, they survived after the fight and everything. But then looking at Shippuden, I'm like, okay, yeah, Choji surviving, you know, it's great. He has stuff going on. Kiba has nothing going on. He's literally just there. And I think his death would have had so much of an impact on all the other characters. And just, it would have been like, Neji's death kind of comes out of nowhere. It's emotional, it's sad, especially because it's off the battle of Inno and Shikamaru's dad's death. Uh, but then, you know, his, the, Neji's death comes, uh, they have little grief time and everything. But then, I get why he does it, he's protecting Hinata and everything, uh, saving Naruto. But then, I feel like there were other characters he could have killed. <laughs> and that, one of them was Kiba, so, you know, th that's that. <laughs> Sai, I really love him. I think he's a great character, especially because one of the filler episodes actually works in his favor and really like got me to like him a lot more. And then there's this whole thing where they're like, Sai can't talk because he has that seal on his tongue. And then Danzo dies and the seal's gone. But then no one does anything about the fact that the seal's gone. Like the Anubu or whatever, the foundation people just go on their own thingy. And then uh, Sai doesn't say anything about Danzo. And then not, like it's like, yeah, he's dead. And I get it, you don't really need any news about him, but why set up the fact that there's the seal and it's gone once he's dead but then no one even asks anything about Danzo, no one tries to figure anything out like they could literally confirm so many things about who else there is like I thought that someone from the foundation was then gonna just come and try to keep everything going that'd be like a little side adventure or something I, maybe I missed it in like one of the fillers because I did skip about 50 episodes or something because there way too many fillers <laughs> but then uh I thought something was going to come of that, but nothing really did. Future Captain coming back into the video real quick. Oh, I just really want to quick, quickly mention the OPs in Naruto and Naruto Shippuden are the best OPs I've ever seen. My favorite OP of any anime of all time is still the first ever Naruto OP. I think that's just a perfect encapsula encapsulation of what the show is what you see on screen is is so perfect and that op is so amazing you see the op with jiraiya when it's like i feel that crying pain or something and then oh man around with the pain arc and everything that is just so amazing so anyway back to the video so while i've quickly just touched on it let's let's go on all out on it the fillers and flashback in naruto shippuden is way too much there's, there's just so many fillers so many flashbacks like I, my favorite part of Naruto Shippuden was easily like that pain arc because you have the Jiraiya fight, you have Naruto learning uh, the Sage Jutsu, and then he comes and he fights pain and it's this amazing fight. Hinata's there, she saves him, she confesses his love. Um, and then they have a bunch of filler episodes and they're not all that bad. There are a few good filler episodes there. It's also a problem because 
Hinata just confessed her love for Naruto. You know, the least you could do is maybe have a scene or two within one of these episodes where Naruto acknowledges what she said or even just like says something about it. Nothing happens. It just it just kind of gets glossed over. And like Sakura says something about it, but then that's it. And it's just really poor. And that's one example. They have the random tuning exams within the war arc and it's so random okay well wow. i i really went past the biggest thing in the series itself the fourth war so that was actually such a fun part and it's not a key focus of this video for some reason i don't know why, i just haven't brought it up but anyway yeah um, the return of the hokage so the first or the fourth and naruto's relationship with his dad and mom those small things here and there were just really great and got me in the feels like i even loved filler episodes so the one with shino and the insect guy Dima eight versus white zetsu the things with sai and kakashi kakashi's such a great character his backstory and everything is just so emotional and so great and then you even have everything with killer b and the kage the five and just everything they do is just so entertaining like I love Gara. he's one of my favorite characters so seeing him as a Kage and do all these things is just so cool to see there's just so many like towards the end of the series I was like oh man there are 15-20 episodes to go this is gonna be really good because they're gonna focus on building up Hinata and Naruto's relationship uh, try to focus on redeeming Sasuke doing a bunch of this maybe actually making Sasuke and Sakura a non-toxic relationship because honestly the fact that she still loves him is is just beyond. It's just terrible. You know, cries because of what Sasuke's done, and then she still loves him, and then but then she goes with Sai, and I'm cool with that. Her going with Sai, it's cool. It's fine. But then Sakura's still obsessed with Sasuke, like he's not good for you he has that one joke where he does the forehead touch and everything are you kidding me right he's like none of my sins have to do anything with you you literally tried to kill her i i, I really i i don't i what do what you like come on i i i don't like sasuke as a character i think he's so poorly done i i get the idea they're going for i think they just butchered it they really did it was fine towards the beginning as they were kids you know they can have all these crushes i can buy hinata being obsessed with naruto because she's that quiet kind of timid person it just it fits with her character it works sakura has so many guys going after her okay you know ends up with sai that's fine she gets someone else and i i've totally gone away from the fillers and flashback because the fillers and flashback just irritated the hell out of me you have this random you have this episode where they have this scene happen and then in the next episode they flash back to that same episode and then a couple episodes later they flash back to that episode the continuous flashbacks and the continuous fillers just annoyed the hell out of me and I did skip a few of them. But then some of them were really good because that's one of the good things about filler episodes. They can be really entertaining. One of my favorites is the dream Ten Ten has because, you know, you see this alternate universe and they're all different. I haven't seen the Road to Ninja movie. I heard that it's like the similar or read it's the similar kind of situation. But yeah, um, I feel like I'm going on with this for too long. So I got to move on to something else. So let's move on to the villains of the show itself. I think the Akatsuki are really great. They're really fun. I already said the whole pain thing is really cool. Uh, I love the whole way that happened. It's it's a little stupid how the fact that Jirai's message says the real one's not among them and then none of them can figure out what the hell that means. Like, come on, the, the sage toad, you know, you were there, you saw there were six of them. You surely have enough context to know what it means. And even Shikamaru's like, they're, they're just an idiot. They're all idiots for this whole section just to drag it out. But then the pacing here is all over the part. Like obviously the fillers and flashback really distorts the pacing. But then you also have Naruto learn the Sage Jutsu like that. The pain fight happens and everything. It's just like, it's my favorite part because I think it's overall, it's really well done. But then there are so many faults there. Besides pain, Toby was so damn amusing. Like, I love Toby so much. Like, the kind of, like, I really wish there was more time spent with Toby itself before he became Madara and became Obito and everything. But then, yeah, look, Obito, you know, that's how you redeem a character. I, I like Obito because I think he was well redeemed and everything. I think, you know, sadly they can't do the same thing with Sasuke. And I'll get on to the ending in a bit. I'm still, I'm going to slowly get there because this is going to be a long video because there's so much to discuss. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the things that happened towards the end of the show, there was like a villain like, oh, uh, Madara, but then it was like, oh, he's not the real Madara, there's another Madara. Um, Kabuto was a villain for a short bit, uh, but then he was like a side thing, so I don't really count that. It becomes Obito as a main villain because Madara kind of focuses on the first Hokage. Totally forgetting about Orochimaru, who kind of got tossed aside for a while, uh, and then came back to life in such a weird, ridiculous way. Like, this guy is trying to figure out immortality, but then you can come back alive through the curse marks, and e even though you're 
soul or whatever was sucked into the genjutsu of that soul thing by Itachi. It's it's so it's like trying to it's so it's so many things happening that they try to if they try to explain it, it would really take a really long time. So you just gotta go with it and roll with it. Um, or it wouldn't make sense to be honest. So then he's trying to I don't get it, Oshimaru, how he's trying to figure out how to be immortal. But then if you can come alive only with the curse marks, just curse marks so many people. That way, if you die, you just come back through the curse mark, you know, you get someone as loyal as Kapuro to do any of the rituals or anything and you're, you're set. So I don't really know what the problem was there. And he even tries to become a good guy later on. It's just, it's, it's so weird. I love her, but it's also so poorly done because it's, there's no real work put into it at all. Anyway, uh, so then from Orijimaru, the Akatsuki, they're great. I love them. Uh, you have obviously Itachi, you know, I've grown to like him, I think he's the best Uchiha there, especially when you're just comparing it to Sasuke. Sasuke is a piece of trash, you know, Itachi all the way. Uh, Obito, love him, he was redeemed, I really liked how his character was handled. You have Madara, I thought Madara was going to be taken down by the first Hokage, and he was going to just have that separate battle where he's like, he goes more obsessed with trying to get revenge than actually trying to fulfill his goal kind of thing. But then no, he ends up becoming the main villain uh, after Obito, but then no, after Madara, it goes to the, the priestess, that Kagoya, I can't remember her name right now, but the one who ate from the divine tree and everything. And it, it's, it's, it blows my mind, like, I was like, oh cool, we're gonna see the history of the shinobi, how they formed and everything. That there was one brave person who tried to end war by, you know, breaking the rules and going to the divine tree and doing something forbidden and everything. But then no, the divine tree comes from space and so did she. So, aliens are in Naruto and I would not have guessed that at all. Oh my god. But then yeah, she becomes the main villain. And then once she's taken care of, uh, it goes to Sasuke, he's the villain for a short while, and then there's this whole really poorly done, like, exploding human kind of thing, and then we get introduced to another special eye of a clan, and for some reason, the whole series, they're like, there are three eyes, you've got the, you know, Rinnen Gun, you got the Sharon Gun, you get the Bakyo... Baku... Bakugan? No, I f I hate this, I hate saying this one, because I always think of Bakugan. Um, Byakugan? Uh, that's it, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it's my favorite of the three eyes because I love seeing the chakra points and everything. I really liked Neji and Kinata. Anyway, there are those three eyes and then all of a sudden there's a fourth eye which I'm assuming people just forgot about even though like the clan was wiped out not that long ago. People know of the Rinnengan since that was like one of the really really old ones but no one remembers this bloodshot eye thing. It's it's it feels really tacked on there. But anyway, that exploding humans thing is a thing. And then I love it because when they, like you see them attack the hidden leaf, Hinata like punches one person and then she like stumbles and it's like she's gonna faint or something. You literally just punched one person. And why are you struggling for? It's just the thing. Uh, I laugh because I'm like, Naruto catches it and I think they're like, ooh, they've got a relationship thing going on. But no, you, you gotta try harder than that, and I'll, I'll touch on that definitely towards the end of this video when I talk about the ending of the series. But, and then after that, you have that Gengo guy who is in the uh, village of silence or land of silence or something. He was, you know, he was served his purpose, nothing amazing, but I just felt like by the end of this, they were just going villain, 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 and then once that big bad villain was done, they should have instead just focused more on the characters, and they had these small little villain things, but then they kind of made it out to be bigger than they actually were because I know that these characters, are, the protagonists, can easily take them down. So they felt a little, it felt a little like underwhelming and also very messy at the same time. Okay, so you know, I think that's that's all I can really remember off the top of my head. There's just one last thing I want to talk about before I get to the ending of the series itself and my overall thoughts of Naruto. Team 10, so season four, episode 82, team 10. This episode, you know, it feels so long ago that was at episode 82. Um, but there's actually like just three or four weeks. Let me just check. On the 22nd of August, I was at episode 82. It's now the 23rd of September and I've finished uh, 500 episodes. So within the space of a month, I've seen about 400 episodes or something. Wow. But anyway, I was actually going to make a video on this episode specifically and talk about the the first five minutes of this, sh oh, uh, this uh, episode because it's just so so well done and so amazing it took my breath away like this is easily one of my favorite episodes and it's really up there because the way it's done is so beautiful asuma's death i didn't really think much of the character i still think he's just 
good is fine. It's nothing amazing or nothing terrible. But then the way it was handled and Shikamaru and everything, it, it was so well done. I have to mention that episode because like episode 133 before in Naruto, Naruto Shippuden has episode 82, which really blew me away. So with that finally said, there are so many small things I can talk about. So many just things I can just mention like the Six Tails arc, which was so annoying, pathetic. Uh, you had that, you know, the fire guys from the fire temple, which was a real fun thing and everything. The Naruto and Ting, when they wear that white coat and cloak and everything, that looks pretty dope and everything. Sasuke's entourage, the Hebi or whatever they're called, uh, they were really bad. I, I, they were entertaining, sure, but at the same time, I didn't care for them. K Karen loves Sasuke, even though she, he tried to kill her. This is what I mean by, I don't, I... The, the what? And then like you got that big guy who's like there to protect Sasuke because of the bone guy and everything. He's fine, he's there. The water guy, I can't remember the names, I just remember the traits. <laughs> the water guy was like fine, entertaining, yeah, whatever about him, to be honest. Yeah. Let's talk about the ending of the series. And by the ending, I mean like the final 15, 20 episodes or so, after the whole war arc is all wrapped and done with, I need to talk about how poorly done this ending is. Because I love it, I think it's great. But then when I look back at it, and obviously it's just last night that I finished watching it, even from the final episode, I, I had my reaction, I feel my reaction straight after the final episode. It was a little underwhelming. Like there was a great build up to it and everything. Like the whole main thing about Naruto, he wants to become Hokage. So by the end of Naruto Shippuden, before we get to Baruto, which obviously isn't Naruto's story, it's Baruto's story, he should become Hokage. And I heard that, I read that in the manga, he does have, he does become Hokage and everything. And there's an episode in Boruto which shows that Boruto is its own story. It's Naruto's story is from Naruto to Naruto Shippuden. That's the end of that whole story thing. Boruto, Boruto is now the main character. It's his story going forward. Watching, I saw the first episode of that show just to get some context, just to see if there was anything I might miss. The, the setup for what's to come looks really interesting, and I'm I'm, re I'm, I'm really excited for it. <laughs> but anyway. Um, back onto Naruto Shippuden, the ending. I don't like Sasuke's redemption arc thingy. I think it was forced. I just don't like Sasuke as a character. It wasn't all that entertaining. It was a little interesting. I do admit, I do did find the ideas interesting. But by that point, I didn't know how long the time jump was. You know, I don't know. It said it was like two years or something, but I found that out uh, during Shikamaru's arc. Since he's been released, he's been gone for like two years or something. They're 19 now. Uh, as like I said earlier, just the relationships everyone has with him, it just doesn't work. I think it's toxic. I just don't think, don't like it. Sasuke is really strong and he's still missing the arm and everything and he easily deals with whatever is going on which is exactly how it should be but at the same time I just find it so hard to believe he's just let go. I get they gave an explanation and everything. I think there should have been more time spent uh, between Sasuke leaving and the after the war like an episode or two kind of focusing on them focusing on the characters, building up their relationship, and just kind of reconnecting all the dots between these two little sections before they happen. And then after the Sasuke's arc, you have Shikamaru's arc, which was really good entertaining. I love how, you know, they actually kind of start to hint at the relationship between him and Tamari, I think her name is. Ino becomes a relationship with Sai, who's one of my favorite characters. I love his powers. After that filler episode where his backstory kind of got filled up, his relationship with people kind of got filled up and everything with his brother and everything. I I really like the character. I, he's, he's like, they even say to himself, he's like Sasuke, but better. I, I'm fine with having all these little side stories and everything with other people because the characters are what drive the show for the most part. And then you have these arcs, they're fine. And then you get to the wedding arc all of a sudden. And I'm like, what? You didn't even build up Hinata and Naruto's relationship. And all of a sudden they're getting married. And for most of these wedding episodes, they're not even in the episodes itself. I thought, okay, one episode on um, Iruka Sensei and it'll be cool. You know, Iruka Sensei, you know, saying a few words. Is this the episode? Because I got a spot for me when I was watching Naruto, Anime Lab, for some reason, gave me an ad for Naruto Shippuden on DVD. And then it started with that whole thing where he's like, I want you to play the role of my father and everything. And I'm like, why would you play this ad for? <laughs> oh my god. But to be fair, Crunchyroll also played an ad for Dr. Stone while I was watching Dr. Stone. So so then, yeah, they don't really build up Hinata and Naruto's relationship. So it kind of just falls flat, the whole fact that they're getting married. Like, last I remember, Naruto was still 
falling for or in love with Sakura. So why is he getting married to Hinata? <laughs> where is their relationship? Like build it up for me, you know, but instead they give these the fun episodes where each person tries to get a gift for them. But then by the end of it, the wedding doesn't, we don't even really see the wedding. You see like some of the reception, they walk out and then it ends, which was, I think that was a really poor way to handle it. But you know, they did what they did, I guess. But their relationship wasn't built up, okay? It was fun. I like the whole following of Aruka sensei and kind of setting up the people of the next generation and everything. But you just needed to give me more of the relationship between these two characters. It's not enough to just say, that they're comrades, that they're friends, comrades. Why did I say it like that? Um, but like, I get that's the kind of relationship that we're hinting at, but it's, it's not enough. You know, from a serious perspective, from any sort of media perspective, it's not enough to just hint at it, have one person confess the love a few hundred episodes ago and have the other one still be falling for the other girl. It was, so it was really poorly done and even in, in the reception part itself, Sas Sasuke, who I thought would be back and then you know, the whole thing would be fixed or whatever. But then Sasuke sends a hawk or an eagle or whatever, and it says congratulations on it. But it goes to Sakura. Why does the hawk go to Sakura? Why wouldn't it go to Naruto? And I actually don't believe Naruto would want to get married without Sasuke there. I'm sure he'd pester Sasuke to come back because if, if it's been two years, Sasuke should come back. Like, I'm sure Naruto is wise enough to know he needs to give him, him space, but then Naruto is also childish. You know, that's always gonna be a part of Naruto. Even they say it themselves, Naruto is Naruto. I imagine he would have pestered Sasuke to come or something, and Sasuke doesn't even congratulate nothing. <laughs> Naruto, he gives it to Sakura, which is, I, I just find that hilarious, because they just needed some way to kind of tie the fact that Sasuke, Sakura and Sasuke are, you know, still a thing or whatever, I don't know. Man. Kakashi being the Hokage, you know, that, it, it's cool, I think it's fine, Haka, Kakashi being the Hokage, but when I was watching it, I was like, so Kakashi's gonna be Hokage for like 10 episodes or something, and then Naruto's gonna become Hokage? But no, Naruto doesn't even become Hokage, and so overall, you know, I've said a lot of bad things about Naruto, but nonetheless, this show is so amazing. I had a smile when I was watching these last few episodes, because it, it was giving me kitty, it was getting me so excited, I was like, oh, it's so lovey-dovey, it's so cute, like the whole Shikamaru Tamari thing, when they're going to go check out for like the hotels or whatever and everything, the resorts, it was so cool. Um, Sai calling Ino beautiful and everything, because I do love Sai, I think it's such a cool character, Shikamaru, it, it's, it's so entertaining and lovely. Uh, the whole Kakashi thing being Hokage, it's so entertaining. Uh, Sonata just suddenly disappears. I, I can't remember where she went, but she just suddenly disappears and everything. Gara, such a cool character. I loved him in um, the Naruto itself, the first one. And then Naruto shipped it in when he was gonna die. I was like, oh man, okay, no. <laughs> and then, you know, he comes back and everything. Uh, it's so cool how everything just goes about. Uh, and overall, that was, that was a comment I saw. Um, Cause then when I was, I'm working on a, or oh, maybe it's probably out by now. If it is out by now, make sure you go check it. Uh, this track I made, which is kind of like, um, you know, having this, I wrote this melody and everything kind of a lo-fi vibe which is like inspired by Naruto and everything it's called Shinobi and uh, when I was searching for uh, scene clips and everything to put inside it there was a comment which someone said the, how much how Naruto wasn't just a show to them how it was so much more how you know the fact that it deals with loneliness and all these things and you can go listen to the track loneliness sorrow and sadness they, they, the music in the show is oh so amazing it's so beautiful and I just, you can't sing enough praises about it. I, it's just so, it's so great. Oh man. And I've lost my train of thought. I literally, I think about the music, I lost my train of thought. But that's the thing, the, the, it's, it's so great. Like the show, you know, it means so much to so many people, the ideas of loneliness, the attachment you can feel to these characters, the effect it can have on people. I read that comment, I was like, Wow, yeah, no, I see, I totally get it, you know, I relate to these characters, I get the characters, you know what I mean? The people who grew up with these things, probably when they were kids and what, they watched Naruto and then years later they saw Naruto shipping it. I can't believe this show finished only a few years ago. But yeah, it, it's, the themes it deals with, sure, sure, it might just like fail at some points. And they're, they're, it's got problems as a series and from a film perspective and everything. But then at the core of it, it's, it's, it's so pure, it's so lovely. I just, you just can't help but overall love this show. And I can see how it really defined a generation.
With that all said and done, this is probably a really long video on Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. Eventually, or not eventually, tonight I'm going to watch a few episodes of Naruto and kick that off and get through that. Uh, I'll probably finish it by the time this uh, video actually goes up because, you know, it's September now. It's going to go up in November, December or something. But anyway, overall, I would give Naruto a solid 8 out of 10. Like, if it wasn't for the amount of fillers, which like 42% of the show is fillers, I'd say if you take 90% of those fillers out, this show could be easily a 9. And then if you fix up some of the writing of some of the characters, which I've mentioned, uh, it, it, would, it would definitely be a 10 out of 10. If, and you can easily say that with anything. If you fix this up, if you do this, if you do that, it can easily be perfect. With what we've got, with Naruto Shippuden specifically, Naruto, I, I still think it's great. It's like an 8, an 8.5. It's... If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like, uh, hit the like button, leave a comment down below on what you thought about Naruto, Naruto Shippen. What does it mean to you? What is your favorite episode? I really find it hard to decide. I guess, you know, it feels weird because I don't want to stop talking about this. I want to talk about this more. I'm definitely going to talk to someone about this. I'm going to message him and talk to because he's the one that triggered me getting back into anime. And then I watched Dr. Stowe and then I watched Naruto Shippen. Uh, and then I was like, carried on from whatever episode I was up to. I need to end this. This is a long ending. Hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Until next time, I'll see you guys.